Hi, I'm Ross Tucker and this is Mike Finch. We are the co-hosts of the Science of Sport podcast. Today we are at Newlands with the South African Sevens doctor, Dr. Lee Gordon, to demonstrate to you rugby's pitch side head injury assessment, the HIA-1. The scenario is this, Mike was playing for South Africa against New Zealand, he went to make a tackle, got his technique a little bit wrong and took a head-to-head -head impact. The diagnosis on the field was not immediately apparent, so there were no so-called criteria 1 signs like loss of consciousness, ataxia, confusion, tonic posturing. But our match day doctor still felt that it warranted an assessment. And so Mike was temporarily substituted and brought here to the medical room where he will undergo a series of tests in order to assess whether he can or cannot return to play. The first of those tests is an immediate memory test where the doctor will read to Mike a list of 10 words that is randomly generated from a larger list of 30. We know from research that most players, 95%, will achieve 16 or more correct answers out of 30. So that's Mike's target. Had Mike had a baseline test, his target would have been to achieve at least the same as baseline. So let's see how he gets on with immediate memory. Alright, so the first test we're going to do is testing your memory. I'm going to give you a list of 10 words. You need to concentrate and give them back to me in whichever order you wish. Do you understand? I understand. Right, let's start. Right, so... Finger, penny, blanket, lemon, insect, candle, paper, sugar, sandwich, wagon. Right, how many do you remember? Finger, penny, blanket, sandwich, lemon. Wagon. Okay. Keep waiting. Right. Okay. Finger, penny, blanket, lemon, insect, candle, paper, sugar, sandwich, wagon. Finger, penny, blanket, sandwich, insect, wagon. Penny. Okay. Right. Okay. So, last time, finger, penny, blanket, lemon, insect, candle, paper, sugar, sandwich, wagon. Finger, penny, blanket, sandwich, wagon. Insect. Uh, um, okay. All right, you're done. Yep. Well done. So far, so good. Mike has achieved the score of 16 or more that he required, and immediate memory is done. Next up, Mike will answer what are called the Maddox questions. These are five questions designed for orientation. They've been tailored for rugby and Mike has to get all five correct. If he answers any one of these incorrectly, he'll be permanently removed from play. Let's see how he goes on these. Right, so our next section is just your where are we today? So which venue are we playing at today? Newlands. Which half is it now? First half. Correct. Who scored last in this match? Uh, we did. Correct. And who did you play in the last game? Australia. Correct. And did your team win the last game? Yes. Well done. Next, Mike will have his cognitive function assessed using a digits backward test. For this test, the player normally would have to achieve at least a score equal to their baseline. Or, because Mike doesn't have a baseline, he needs two out of a possible four in order to pass the test. Right, so our next test is going to be concentration with digits backwards. I'm going to give you a list of numbers and you forwards and you're going to give them to me backwards. So for example, I would say 7, 1, 9 and you would say 9, 1, 7. Do you understand? I understand. Right, let's go. 4, 9, 3. 3, 9, 4. 
three, two, seven, nine. Nine, seven, two, three. Well done. Six, two, nine, seven, one. One, seven, nine, two, six. Well done. Five, three, nine, one, four, eight. Eight, four, one, nine, three, five. Well done. So that is cognitive function in the bag with a full house of four out of four. Next up, Mike faces the balance assessments. Now you'll face two challenges here, a tandem stance test and a single leg stance test. For the tandem stance test, Mike will have to make fewer than four errors in order to pass, whereas for single leg stance, his target is to make fewer than six errors. Right, Mike, so our next test is going to be your balance. So uh, which foot do you kick with? My right. So we're going to test your left foot. Any injuries in your knee, ankle or foot? No. Good. Okay, so the first test is your tandem stance. So you're going to stand with your left foot behind your right foot, heel to toe. Okay. You're going to put your hands on your hips. And when you're ready and you have your balance, you're going to close your eyes. At that point, I'll start timing you. If you lose your balance, go back into that position as quickly as you can. Do you understand? I understand. Right. Whenever you're ready, I'll start timing. Okay. Good, well done. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to stand, you're going to stand on your left foot, same thing, hands on your hips. So lift your right foot up and when you have your balance and you're happy, close your eyes and I will start timing you. Same thing. So whenever you're ready, let's go. Well done. So that's four subtests done, two to go. Next up is a symptom checklist. The doctor will give Mike an iPad and he will have to read a list of possible symptoms and report whether he is experiencing any of them. The doctor will then assess for clinical signs such as looking or appearing emotional, feeling anxious, or possibly that the doctor has a suspicion of concussion despite normal subtests. Right Mike, so we're going to go through a list of your symptoms at the moment. I'm going to give you the iPad and I want you to read the instructions out loud and then answer the questions related to the symptoms. If you've got any new symptoms that you don't usually have and if you've got any baseline symptoms that have changed, you need to make note of that. Alright, right. you understand? understand. Okay. Right. Do you have a headache? No. Do you have dizziness? No. Do you have pressure in your head? No. Do you feel nauseated or like vomiting? No. Do you have blurred vision? No. Does the light or noise worry you? No. Do you feel as though you are slowing down? No. Do you feel like you're in a fog? No. Do you feel unwell? No. Okay. Thank you. Right, well done. Right, Mike, so I can see that you're not looking abnormally anxious or, or irritable and you don't seem to have any difficulty concentrating or remembering and there's nothing else that makes me suspicious about concussion um, outside of this test. At this point, it's important to note that at any point, if the doctor suspects a concussion, they can remove the player even if all the subtests are normal. In this instance, the doctor is happy, and so we proceed to the final test, which is delayed recall. Do you remember that list of 10 words that Mike was given earlier? How many of those do you remember? Mike has to score at least four in order to pass this particular subtest. So let's see 
if Mike's delayed recall is up to the challenge. Right, Mike, so the last part of this test is, do you remember I gave you a list of 10 words earlier? Yes. Okay, I need you to give me back as many of those as you can remember. Right, go. Um, finger, penny, wagon, insect, uh, candle. Right. Any others? No. No? Right. Okay, well done. And that is a wrap. Mike has passed every single one of the subtests. The doctor has no basis to suspect a concussion. And so therefore Mike's HIA1 would be deemed normal and he's free to return to play. It's really important at this point to note that Mike, irrespective of whether he passes or fails this test, will still undergo a second test on the day of the match after it's completed. And a third test, 36 to 48 hours later, using a more detailed assessment. And it's on the basis of those two results that a concussion is either confirmed or not confirmed. However, for now, Mike is back on the field, hopefully producing a match-winning performance for the box as we beat New Zealand to win the World Cup.